Okay, hello and welcome again to another Words on New Music and Review. I'm Jim Gooden in Brooklyn and Paul Muller, my co-host, is out in Los Angeles. We're live via Google Hangout. Today we're going to listen and discuss three recent Improv Friday musical artists, uh, two from North America and one from Sweden. First is going to be Lydia Busler Blaze, and Paul's going to tell us a bit about this fine French horn player. Well, Lydia is from Montpelier, Vermont. Uh, she and her husband uh, have a music studio there. Uh, Lydia teaches uh, brass uh, horn playing, of course. Uh, I think her husband is a cello player. Lydia is also a traveling clinician, so she'll go about the countryside and uh, have clinics for brass playing. Uh, her musical interests are uh, improvisational and solo chamber horn playing. Uh, she's also a composer and teacher. She studied at the New England Conservatory and the Boston Conservatory and also the University of New Hampshire. Uh, Lydia lives in the country and has a number of interests. Uh, she lists uh, herself as a baker, a gardener, a mother, a lover, a healer, a skier, a kayaker, <laughs> a hiker, a sailor, a practiced visual artist, uh, drawing and intaglio printmaking, watercolor and small sculpture. Uh, she's also president of the local Hunger Mountain Co-op Council. Uh, Liddy has 30 published musical works uh, in her catalog online. Uh, she has performed with the uh, New York City Ballet, the Brooklyn Philharmonic, the Jose Limon uh, Dance Company, the Manhattan Chamber Orchestra, as well as holding the position of solo horn with the Rome Festival Opera. We're going to hear uh, a piece that uh, comes to us from her vacation. Uh, on the coast of Maine this week, uh, she had time to do a horn improv. The title is We Two Together Again Soon, and she posted this on the Improv Friday thread this week and, and left this note with it. Hello, late from the coast of Maine, where I am camping on the beach of the Atlantic. We are three <laughs> here, <laughs> but I leave you with two late entries for two. Uh, I don't even know what day it is until a short time ago. Love from Maine, uh, Lydia. So here now is We Two Together Again Soon, a horn improv direct from the coast of Maine, uh, and let's hear what it sounds like. <laughs> Thank you. 
And we are back. That was Lydia Busler Blaze's beautiful piece, We Two, together again soon. Uh, Paul, what were your thoughts on that? It's a lovely, lovely uh, piece. Well, sure. Uh, it has, uh, to my ear, a very solid sound, uh, good, confident tone. It's hard to believe she's on vacation camping on the coast of Maine. It sounds like yeah. it could <laughs> be in a studio. It, it had a very good uh, tone to it. Uh, it was a very mournful piece in some ways, but uplifting at the same time. Uh, very expansive, very big sound. Uh, inspired, I think, by the rugged coast of Maine. You can just see her sitting out there on a crop of rocks uh, <laughs> by the surf rolling up. And, uh, you know, that's just the kind Looking of music. For lobsters. Well, <laughs> it's just the kind of music it would go through your head in that uh, kind of landscape. So it was. Uh, I thought a very uh, you know accurate description of what she must be feeling uh, on vacation there uh, in Maine, uh, and so I thought it was a, a, a beautiful piece. And of course, she's very um, accomplished a player, and it shows in this piece. Oh, certainly. I, I didn't mean to jump in there. I was just couldn't resist because it's just <laughs> such a colorful scene. I know Maine really well. It was almost home once, and it. Uh, I roughly know, according to her uh, Facebook post, I think where she is, and it's uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. So, and and it, you know, her music is almost the, the horn lines are almost calling that. It's almost like she's, like you say, on the coast, and just well, she is on the coast, but I mean, she's right there, just sending a response over across to maybe our next feature, Roger. So it, yeah. it's just it's just lovely. Um, well, I, Lydia, yeah, Lydia is a very accomplished improviser. Uh, this piece was 4 minutes 40 seconds, and it's hard to sustain that kind of momentum, I think, in an improvised piece with those soaring lines, you know, and, the, and sure. uh, you know, uh, creating that image uh, that you hear. I didn't hear any soft spots in that. I thought it was beautifully done, and, you know, it was really an excellent piece to be used in a mix or a mash, and this is exactly what Steve Layton did in his mix uh, Into This Rain that was posted shortly after uh, Lydia's piece was put up. Uh, and I think, if anything, it sounds even better in the mix, uh, the way Steve has surrounded it with some more uh, material that uh, adds to the, uh, you know, the same image that you get from her uh, solo. Oh, yeah, that was, no, that's a wonderful mash she did. And uh, it, it, it's just, you know, she's got great wind power, I'll say that. I, I just 
the lines are soaring. I on first listen, I was a little challenged by when she, the high parts were so beautiful, and then she'd go down on the lower range, and it it was never muddy or anything like that. It was just getting kind of it was definitely a counter line, and and then the more I hear it, even on that playback, it makes a tremendous amount of lyrical sense. Um, sure. Our next fellow we got up, or our first gentleman, rather, we want to start with the ladies first on this show. Uh, the next one is another recent improv uh posting, and his name he hails from Sweden. His name is Roger. He's got a nickname called a Rocknet Sundstrom. And, Paul, you're going to give us a little background on him, and then we'll hear his piece, Two Caves. <laughs> sure. Roger uh, comes to us from Exio, Sweden. Um, he has a day job there. He listed on his website, and it, it was in Swedish. I can't resist uh, uh, giving it. Uh, he is a drift techniker. Uh, <laughs> and a uh, drift techniker, when you do the Google translation, means technician. And I think he's some sort of a network technician. Uh, he works for uh, Exio Energy, so uh, he's probably got a, uh, an important uh, part uh, in the energy uh, uh distribution there in Sweden. Um, Roger is a guitar player and uh, he's been a very um, uh, productive and faithful uh, participant at Improv Friday for the last two or three years. We've heard something from him almost every week and it's always good. Uh, his interests uh, musically seem to be uh, ambient uh, music and experimental music uh, and uh, he has a, a very vivid imagination. Uh, I've always found his works to be very thoughtful and, and well laid out and, uh, you know, uh, full of imagery. Um, and that may be no coincidence. His other interest is photography. Um, yeah. And uh, a, a few weeks ago, in the middle of the Swedish summer, he, he bought this giant lens, you know, and, and suddenly Facebook is filled with pictures of giant bugs. He's been taking pictures <laughs> of moths and all, all kinds of creatures uh, and and at such close-ups you know they really look elegant uh, it's amazing uh, what he's gotten so <laughs> his uh, photography is is very good uh, Roger in September will be part of a release on the three legs duck net label uh, titled news week vision uh, these are some remixes of music by Jude Cowan Montague uh, by uh, Roger as well as Bruce Hamilton, Paulo Chagas, some of the other Improv Friday people, and two or three other uh, musicians. Uh, and uh, Jude says that this is a collection of new composed responses to her songs uh, on uh, My World News Vision album, also on Three Legs Doug. So we'll look forward to that in September. <clears throat> the piece we'll be hearing uh, today is called Two Caves. And Roger posted this with a note, and he says it's another sound scraping from my guitar. So wow. um, I'm curious to see what that means, so uh, we should hear it and uh, see what it sounds like.
Man, I thought of one thing in there is like, it, that was so great to hear in cans and headphones is like just it, the one, the one comment and I'm going to jump to Paul for your thoughts, but uh, in the TV series Lost, there's a smoke monster and Roger's music <laughs> plays a smoke monster always to a T. I've told him that in, in review thoughts by text, but that that's my biggest comment on that. It's a lovely piece. Back to you. Well, I agree. Uh, it is dark, it is deep and mysterious. Um, you know, he has a metallic sound and yeah. yet a soft kind of string sound. And I think it's the tension between those two that really, you know, makes you feel like you're walking in a dark place and you can't see anything in front of your face a lot of the times. Um, it sounded to me a little bit like he's got some sort of slow motion sitar sound. You know, it's kind of that yeah. twangy, almost metallic, but yet a string sound. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's very effective for delivering that kind of image. Uh, I, I wrote down here, it's like standing by a yawning chasm underground <laughs> in the dark. You know, you don't want to step, you know, you'll fall or into, into who knows what. Uh, but it's very evocative of the title, as is uh, much of Roger's music. Uh, when he does these ambient pieces, he really knows how to uh, uh, make the image come uh, alive in your head. You know, you hear this and it, you, you know exactly what he's uh He's trying to portray, uh, and and I agree. Uh, you know, it, it sounds like uh, some kind of science fiction thing where there's something out there and you can't quite define what it is, but it's 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 dark and it's mysterious and it's scary and it, uh, it it's very effective in in uh, in in, in uh, making that kind of uh, connection. Oh yeah, for sure. I, and he's done so several pieces like it and it's like everyone I'm going where you know where do the sounds where does he get these because it's it is kind of guitar based and he clearly processes a lot and you know it's just uh, anyhow just uh, I think he's he's really probably cool. I think he's probably a pretty good technician uh, you know his well, mixes are very good uh, yeah. you listen to them there's a lot of a lot of effort and a lot of detail uh, work in there and you can it really it really makes um, really you know your ears really pick up on it, uh, and uh, his, you know, his mixes always I think are uh, a little beyond what I've been able to do. But it's because he knows how to uh, how to do it, and uh, we didn't hear that in this piece. But if you get a chance to hear something that Roger mixes together, it's always done very well. Uh, certainly, certainly. And one thing I'll mention is uh, all this music is uh, produced each weekend as part of a online community that we're all members of called Improv Friday and it's literally uh, improvfriday.com on the web you can check it out and the uh, event list or the recorded music from each weekend is posted from the weekend through about Thursday early so for the coming weeks so please uh, take a listen to that our next artist up is actually a guy that I came across and I'm not sure how we connected but we were both on SoundCloud a fellow from Colorado named Paul Mimlich uh, who's just a fine multi-instrumentalist and user of electronics. Um, he's a great horn player and uh, just has a lot to say, but I recruited him. I'm kind of proud of that and got him to come over to Improv Friday. And uh, he's been staying with us for the la you know, ever since for the last couple of months. But Paul shed a little bit of uh, info on his background. Maybe you okay. his name better than I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, Paul is from Evergreen, Colorado. Uh, I guess that's a Denver area. I'm not. I'm not it is. sure. I'm, okay. I'm not clear I, I on my. I talked to him about that. My uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, Paul is retired, so he has uh, some time to spend with his music. Huh. That's good for us. Uh, he's a uh, primarily, I think, a bass clarinet player, although he does other woodwinds. Uh, his musical interests are improvisation, painting with sound. <laughs> he does improvisation and explorations, uh, low-range recorders, guitars, clarinets, interactive electronics. Uh, he's trying to get a freedom through sound, uh, he says, to approach and become immersed in the creative process without intent, he says. <laughs> so he's a pure improvisationalist. Uh, I guess he picks up the horn and, and just plays what's there. Um, he uh, says he's an autodidact, which is a fancy word for self-taught, I think. Uh, hmm. He started on the guitars in the mid-60s, uh, now various other instruments. Maybe you know what this is, Jim, a mandocello? Yeah, he, he, uh, I, I, was, I was very excited when I learned that he had one of those, because I, uh, 
it, it's of the mandolin family, and he uses this is the first piece I've ever heard him use it in. But okay, it is yeah. it, it's a, like a bass mandolin. It's the same choruses and pairs. There there are four choruses or four pairs, uh, and it's it's down uh, regular mandolins uh, equivalent to the violin. The uh, mandola is equivalent to the viola, and the uh, the mando cello is literally down in the cello's range, so it okay. really is yeah. a cool sound. And he uses it on this piece very effectively as the foundation of yeah. the loop. Yeah, sure, you bet. <laughs> he also uh, plays a bass and contra bass recorder. I've I played a little recorder, and uh, you know, uh, a tenor is as low as I've gotten, and that's not very low. So he's he's down in the lower registers, much like the bass clarinet. I expect. Wow. Um, also. <laughs> Acoustic and electroacoustic uh, music. Uh, his other interests are designing and exploring non-circular uh, music systems, uh, vintage Epiphone, archtop guitars, and hmm. Burmese and Thai martial arts. <laughs> wow! So he has he has a, an eclectic uh, group of interests. Uh, he nice. has a YouTube he has a YouTube channel that's called Music Without Intent, uh, and. Um, I guess we're going to hear uh, a say something uh, based on the mando cello. It's called Mando Groove. Uh, it features two interactive voices: uh, a, a bass clarinet and a iPad synthesizer, and a virtual uh, MIDI over the mando cello loop. And if you understood all that, maybe the music <laughs> will make sense. We should probably listen to it rather than try and figure out what it is. So uh, we'll play that and uh, and hear what a mando cello sounds like.
Wow, that's really effective. All these artists today have been really uh, just, uh, I think, doing some moving work. And uh, I thought uh, Paul's use of both looping and his, his you know, you can t sort of, or I feel that his voice is his bass clarinet, but he has great musicality and uh, the bass clarinet lines were much like a call and response to me. But uh, what were your thoughts on it, sir? Well, I uh, I heard uh, something very similar. Um, uh, it, it, I thought it had a very good groove, you know. That mandocello, the, yeah. the looping, uh, was was a was a great thing. Uh, Give it a good groove, and that's a good match with his bass clarinet playing. Uh, they're they're similar registers, but they complement each other very well. I thought this gave a convincing, you know, solitary and distant feel to it. Um, you know, we've uh, We've had the Atlantic Ocean uh, in Lydia's <laughs> horn playing. We've had dark caves with something scary inside from yeah. Roger. And now what I think we have is, is kind of a sunset in open country. You know, uh, Paul is from Colorado. You can almost hear a little of that. I could see a, a wide open kind of mountain setting and the sun going down over it. And, oh, yeah. uh, you know, this, this was kind of evocative of that. I think his clarinet playing is a lot smoother and more controlled in a setting like this where he's playing with another voice, another, you know, the mandocello. Uh, his usual solo improvs on the bass clarinet, he kind of explores the outer limits of the instrument. So you get these really low growls and the high squeaks and everything. But this, this was, uh, to me, a little more uh, controlled and smoother. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, all clarinets and the bass clarinet uh, as well has, a, you know, in the low register, a very, very... Uh, appealing tone, you know that Shamu register there. It really sounds good. Oh yeah. And uh, I thought it was uh, very nice. Now this is the first thing I think I've heard from Paul that had more than just you know uh, a single voice to it. Uh, so uh, it was well done. Uh, if this is something he's experimenting with, I think he's on the right track. It seems like it's working out. Uh, I do appreciate his solo uh, improvisations on the bass clarinet. They mix well with other uh, pieces, uh, you know, you put him uh, and Ben Smith together, you, can, you can't miss. Uh, and this is a little different now. He's, he's uh, got it uh, connected to a loop with a mandocello, but I thought it was uh, very well done. Uh, I'd echo that. And, and, it, and most of his pieces, in fact, all the others done on each weekend event have been singular yeah, singular horn pieces. And this one, uh, I've heard some, some similar um, on his SoundCloud site, um, which, you know, I don't have that URL handy, but you can search on SoundCloud under Paul Mimlich, and it's spelled M-I-M-L-I-T-S-C-H. Um, but I think that's going to about do it for today. Uh, our goal on these review shows is kind of just to in and out and give you a taste of, uh, of two to three people, and uh, we've had a neat overview today. I wanted to close out... Um, with something that I hope I'll be able to play a sample from uh, maybe on the next show when we next get together. It's I stumbled onto it or came across it on a Facebook post. I, I'm not really sure how I found it, but there's a website, a blog site called I Care If You Listen. It's literally that without the spaces, if you will. And they released a summer uh, mixtape, as they call it, that was a sampler of 10 new music artists from various places um, and it's available for free download uh, as it's trying to encourage, you know, you like the sampler is with any sampler and you go to the links and then you can support the individual artist, which some very fine people are on it, particularly uh, a gentleman I really responded to, responded to named BJ Cole, and he's a lap stealer from the UK and has been very involved with Brian Eno. But anyhow, the URL on that download uh, is icareifyoulisten.com forward slash summer 2012 hyphen mixtape. And I, I really have, uh, I stumbled onto it last weekend and have listened to it a bunch of times. So um, maybe we'll play a sample in the future, but uh, did, you, uh, did you have a chance to hear anything from that, Paul? I did. I listened to the piece by B.J. Cole. I think it's a cent to. Right, um, right, having something to do with the space program, and its ambient music uh, was uh, very well done. Um, I remember a lot of flutes and smooth lines to it. Um, yeah, if we uh, get a chance to play it, uh, we we can have more to say about it. But I I would agree that uh, you know if you can get to that site and listen to some of those pieces, it's it's good things. 
Well, uh, definitely. Thanks so much for joining us for this uh, another uh, installment of this is an, a new project. This words on new music. Uh, Paul and I have worked together on audio podcast in the past, and a few weeks ago uh, we took a lead from our uh, kind of producer and advisor on this, a gentleman named J.C. Coombs. Uh, he's a founder of Improv Friday, and he suggested we consider taking it to video. So uh, we have, and we're kind of doing it as we go. And uh, you can check out our channel at uh, Words on New Music on YouTube. And um, also, please do check out Improv Friday, the online community that we're all part of. And uh, we're going to close out for today, and I'm going to let Paul say goodbye. I'll switch over all this technical back and forth. I'm uh, jumbling a lot of hats, but you're up, sir. Goodbye. All right. <laughs> Excellent. And for me in New York, Paul in Los Angeles, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Have a great one.